Hello and welcome to this little talk on the train soldier with the piranha. Now this is not a guide, since I've done, um, I can't, maybe three, four different train soldier guides, and everyone knows the routine by now. It's an old class, I don't need to go through uh, it as a guide per se. However, uh, with the arrival of the new DLC and uh, some nice new weapons, I thought it would be a nice thing to uh, comment and do a video on the Piranha in conjunction with the Terrain Soldier, which uh, I have to say, in terms of effectiveness and perhaps fun, has supplanted my own preference for the Claymore. Now, the Claymore has been for quite some time my favorite uh, Terrain Soldier weapon, but uh, I'd say the Piranha beats it not only in effectiveness but also in other respects. It's much lighter, the cooldown on Marksman is incredibly low, and so on and so forth. Not that Marksman has a long cooldown. I'll briefly go through the build. The build is nothing special. For Marksman, what you want to do with this is you want to uh, max out your rate of fire. That is to say, on 4, choose rate of fire. Ignore headshot damage. You already have headshot, assuming you're passive, which I'll get into a second, is spec for headshot. Um, so you'll take the extra duration. And then finally, the rate of fire and accuracy. That'll give you 45% accuracy and 50% increase in rate of fire. Um, one might ask, well, it's such a terribly inaccurate shotgun. Indeed it is. Uh, if you don't have some sort of accuracy bonus, why not go for the accuracy? There are two reasons for that. Quite simply, um, you can pretty much still hit everything at a decent range, or quite a good range, and you're not going to always be fighting in a range. So that extra rate of fire will translate automatically into a higher DPS, as you see in the video. Sometimes I hit things across the map, um, sometimes I hit things halfway across the map, and sometimes I'm up close. Not only that, as many people have figured out, the higher the rate of fire bonus, um, the, the faster the reload animation occurs, allowing you to reload more quickly, and that's a be benefit of boon as well. So definitely go for maxed out rate of fire at 50% and uh, accuracy at 45%. Proxy mine concussive shots, completely irrelevant on this build in my opinion. I, in this particular run, I chose uh, proxy mine. It's really up to you. I think I used it maybe three, four times max. It doesn't really matter. You're just shooting things. Uh, and the passive, um, I would certainly not bother with weapon weight uh, bonuses. Just go for max damage, which will end up at 30%, headshot bonuses, and 55%. Stability. Uh, the 55% percent stability will uh, come in rather handy with this uh, gun because um, even if you're not even if you're not aiming or scoping in with it, even if you're carrying it uh, and firing it from the hip, there's still a fair bit of kickback, i.e., recoil. And the Eternian soldier possessing 55% passive stability bonus uh, will negate that, or not negate that, but certainly mitigate it to some extent. And that, of course, is very beneficial. Uh, fitness, max out fitness, uh, bottom row, health and fit shields, and so on. So that's the build quite quickly. Um, let's just briefly talk about team composition. I think people who've beaten Platinum before know that uh, Platinum requires a lot, lot more team synergy and working together, and I would say group cohesion in the sense of sticking together more than gold. Why? Because gold, essentially, these days, it's just running around killing things. Any class is good for that, uh, if you practice, but that's just not true on Platinum. The enemies hit a little bit harder, they take longer to take out, and there are a lot of big enemies. So, at least to, to, at this current moment in time, um, working together uh, helps a lot. So, of course, we did do a little strategy here, um, which, and this might become a classic Platinum strategy, basically two Demolishers hanging out in the control tower with two DPSers. Uh, I was the DPSer, I did the Turian Soldier, and my teammate was using the Destroyer. So, in con conjunction with grenade spamming, the Pylon, uh, it works uh, quite well. Um, and in some ways, it's the optimal setup. Some kind of DPS machine, be the Turian Soldier or Demolisher, uh, and a and at least one sorry destroyer or at least one demolisher but uh, this gun is just overall fantastic it's also very very good in the hands of a vanguard um, destroyer it's very good obviously in destroyer too I, I tend to like it on the Turian soldier the most just because the accuracy is increased to such a degree the, um, the recoil is severely reduced, 
and the rate of fire is highest. Uh, so th that's just my personal preference. Um, I'm, I know a lot of people that swear by it using a GI or a, a destroyer, uh, and on a Vanguard, for example, Crow Guard, it's also very good. Um, but it's really, really a great weapon. Uh, but certainly, it doesn't require a whole lot of aim. Really, it's no. It doesn't require near the amount of uh, practice and aim and skill to make a Turing soldier of the Claymore viable. But it's just very, very effective. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, this is definitely a camping video, more or less. Uh, I think, in general, the trend is that we've determined, at the very least, is that running around a lot on platinum is a bad idea. Um, and, like I said, sticking together, even if you want to call it camping, is a better idea. That way, if someone gets hit or not uh, taken out, they can be res and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe that'll change with time with exceptionally skilled players. But for now, staying in the general vicinity of each other is the best plan. And, uh, of course, this is an optimal setup with two demolishers and two DPSers. Uh, destroyer, soldier. Anyway, that's the video. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the music, including the video. And I'll see you all soon, and thanks for watching.